Pocket 6K BM RAW to Adobe Premiere to resolve to YouTube workflow. In this video, we are going to discuss my workflow for editing and grading raw footage shot with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. We will also use Adobe Premiere Pro for editing the footage and DaVinci Resolve for grading it. When we are done, we will make a master file for backup and a file for YouTube. Let's get started. First, copy your BM RAW footage to your edit drive. Next, go to www.blackmagicdesign.com forward slash support. Find, download, and install the latest version of Blackmagic RAW. This software update will allow you to work with BM RAW files in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, let's launch Adobe Premiere Pro. Create a project by clicking New Project, naming it, and browsing to where you want to save it. Then press OK. Notice that we are in the Editing tab. Import your BM RAW files by going to File, Import, and navigating to where your files are located. Mine are located in this folder. Click on the folder and press Import. I am also going to import a music file. An alternate way to import is to right-click, select Import. Navigate to the files or folder that you want and press Import. Drop one of the video files onto the empty timeline. This creates a timeline that matches the setting of your clip. Next, create an adjustment layer by clicking in your project folder where all of your clips are. Select File, New, Adjustment Layer. It will make the adjustment layer the resolution of your current sequence. Click OK. Drag your adjustment layer onto your timeline and put it on a video track above your video clip in the sequence. My BM RAW clip is on V1, so I'll put the adjustment layer above it on V2. Drag out the adjustment layer so that it covers the area of the timeline that you will be editing. Just go to the tail of the clip left click and drag it to the right to increase the duration. Left click on the adjustment layer. Click on the effects tab and go into the video effects folder. In the color correction folder, find the Lumetri color effect and drag and drop it onto the adjustment layer. In the upper left source window, click on the Effect Controls tab, and under the Lumetri Color Effect, click on Basic Correction, and then on Input LUT, change it from None to Alexa Default Log C to Rec 709. We are just going to use this LUT so that we can edit our footage on the timeline without it looking flat. We will discard it later and do a proper grade in DaVinci Resolve. Next, edit your footage like you normally would. For this tutorial, I'm just going to place a few clips on the timeline, set your playback resolution to half or quarter if you are having problems playing back your video on the timeline. Delete the audio on the clips by selecting them right-clicking, selecting Unlink, and then selecting and deleting each audio part of the clip. Then I will add my music clip on A1, like I was editing a music video. After we are happy with our timeline, we will select our adjustment layer and press delete to get rid of it. You want to keep your Premiere timeline as simple and as clean as possible so that Resolve doesn't have any issues with it. 
Now, go to File, Export, Final Cut Pro XML. Name the XML file. Let's call this XML for Resolve. Click OK. Save your project, Command S, and exit Adobe Premiere Pro. Launch DaVinci Resolve and create a new project by clicking New Project and then naming it. I'll call this project Tutorial Resolve Grade. Click on the Edit tab at the bottom of the Resolve screen. Go to File, Import Timeline, Import AAF EDL XML, and then navigate to the XML file that you just created in Adobe Premiere Pro. Then press Open. Press OK again and your timeline will load and resolve. Click on the Color tab at the bottom of the screen. Let's start creating our footage. Click on the first clip, 01. Click on the Blur tab. I like to add a little sharpening to my shots. A little goes a long way. Let's try 0.47 by pulling down the controls under Radius. Next, let's add a LUT to our shot. Right click on the node. Go to LUTs. 3D LUT, Blackmagic Design, and choose Blackmagic Pocket 6K Film to Extended Video. This LUT will give our flat log footage contrast and color. Now I will click on the node and press Command and C at the same time. This copies the LUT and sharpening information. I'll click on my next clip and paste the information to their nodes. Now I will make sure that my waveform monitor is up in Resolve. It's under Scopes. Remember that when you shoot BM RAW, your camera captures all of the raw data so that you can adjust white balance and ISO when grading. It's not baked in in the field. This helps when we don't quite nail exposure and white balance when shooting. So before I adjust any other levels, I will go to my RAW camera controls by clicking on this camera icon tab called Camera RAW. Under Decode Quality, I will choose Full Res. Under Decode Using, I'll select Clip. Now I can adjust ISO and white balance until I get the image in the right ballpark, meaning not over or underexposed and the right color, or as close as I can get it. If you got a good white balance when you were in the field or you nailed exposure while shooting, you don't have to change these settings at all. In this example, I will adjust my ISO a little lower. And change my white balance from as shot to daylight. After I do that, I go to the third icon, which is called Color Wheels. Here I can adjust the Lift, Gamma, Gain, and Offset controls to fine-tune my grade. Lift is your shadows, Gamma is your midtones, Gain is your highlights, and Offset affects all three at once. I usually don't adjust Offset very much. Slide the dials left or right slowly. you will see your waveform go up and down. Basically, using your lift control, you want your blacks to just start to touch zero on the waveform monitor. You want your highlights, using the gain control, to hit around 896 to 1023 on the scale. You can adjust your midtones with the gamma control to taste. Every shot is different, 
If, for example, you have a shot where the brightest thing in the frame is a person's face, you won't want to bring your gain that high or you will blow out your skin tones. A calibrated monitor, your eye, and the scopes will help you make the right decisions. The sat or saturation default at 50. I sometimes go a little higher, like 60, or a little lower, like 40, depending on the type of look I am going for. It's really up to you. Note, when you are shooting in the field in BM RAW, try to capture as much information in the image as you can. Use your histogram and try not to clip your highlights or your shadows by pushing them too hard to the left or right. Too hard to the left will clip your shadows. Too hard to the right will clip your highlights. Most of the time, keeping a balanced histogram will be easy because your camera can capture 13 stops of dynamic range. If you are shooting in extreme lighting conditions, however, like shooting into the sun, you will most likely have to let highlights or shadows clip. Just know that you will never get back the clipped information. So choose your exposure wisely, even when shooting raw in the field. To fine-tune colors in DaVinci Resolve, if need be, I would pull up my parade scope and adjust the amount of red, blue, and green levels in each shot until the colors look natural. You can adjust colors in the shadows, lift, in the midtones, gamma, and in the highlights, gain. Adjusting the offset level changes the color of everything. If you are lucky enough to have something white in your shot and your colors are way off, you can use the white balance picker. This is just a basic color correction pass. If you want to create an overall look for your footage, you can group all of your shots together by shift clicking all of them, right click, and then choosing add into new group. Name your group and then click OK. I'll call this post group. Above your node is where you let Resolve know if you want to adjust the grade on one shot or on the group you just created. I'll change it from clip to group post clip. Now, when I make any adjustments, it will affect every one of my shots in the group. Maybe I'll create a look where I want my blacks to have a blue tint and my midtones to have a warmer orange tint. And then maybe I will increase contrast by bringing down my blacks and increasing my highlights. Every project will have different grading needs depending on the mood that you want to create. If you hate what you've done, just right click on the group node and select reset node grade. When you are finished with your grade, Let's export our footage by going to the rocket ship tab called Deliver. I am going to output or render a custom file. Name your file under File Name. Choose where you want your file to be saved using Location Browse. For format, I will go with QuickTime. For codec, I'll choose Apple ProRes. For type, I'll go with Apple ProRes 422HQ. Under Resolution, if you have DaVinci Resolve Studio, not the free version, you can export a 6K or an 8K file. If you have the free version, I believe that you can't output above 4K. I'll choose 6K because I find that works best for me. Press Add to Render Queue. Then press Start Render on the right side of the screen. Your graded footage file is being made. After the export is done, save your Resolve project, quit Resolve, and open your Adobe Premiere Pro project that you were working on earlier. Import your 6K graded ProRes HQ file and drag it on top of your existing 6K sequence. I just take the video, not the mixed together audio that comes with it, in case I want to make any more audio changes. Now is the time to add titles and any additional things you want to do in post. To export a master file, 
simply mark an in and out on the sequence. Go to File, Export Media. For Format, I'll select QuickTime. For Preset, I'll choose Apple ProRes 422HQ. This will make you a new Apple ProRes HQ 6K file. Be sure to change the output name and let Premiere know where you want this file to be saved. Then press Save. Finally, press Export and your master file will be made. To export a 6K file for YouTube, I click File, Export Media. For format, I'll choose H.264. Under Preset, I'll pick YouTube 2160p 4K Ultra HD. Then under the Video tab, I'll click the Match Source button. This will change the resolution from 4K to 6K. If I have time and want the best results, I'll change bitrate encoding from VBR1 pass to VBR2 pass. Under bitrate settings, I'll change the target bitrate from 40 to 100. I'll also check the render at maximum depth box and use maximum render quality. Set the output name in the file path. then press export. This may take a little while to upload and convert, but when it's finished, it should look pretty good on YouTube. If you want a smaller file size, lower the resolution and or bitrate. That's my current workflow. There are many ways to edit, grade, and export BM RAW footage, so don't be afraid to experiment with your own workflow. This tutorial is just a starting point. I hope that you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.